What is up, everybody? Solomon here. I hope you guys are all having a fantastic Monday. We are going to get into quite a bit of information today. And the first thing I wanted to touch base on, and I have to give credit to Wrath of Kahneman. If you don't follow him on Twitter, please do so. He found this, and this is from October 7th. This is Central Bank Digital Currency, the European Perspective. Uh, I'm going to go through this. This directly mentions XRP. And then I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into Synecron, who they are a tech integrator for some of these large banking institutions, uh, and some of their ties in with Ripple, as well as the World Bank, as well as Murex, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we are going to get into quite a bit of information here, so I'm just going to dive right in. So again, this is Ernst & Young. This is EY, and this is Central Bank Digital Currency, the European Perspective from the 7th of October. Interestingly enough here, it says payments today in Norway. And we can see right on the left here, there is uh, the status of flows going through all the way from a shop uh, to a small bank, to a large bank, to a central bank, to a large bank, and then to a factory. This says CBDC token economy. Weird that they have payments today in Norway. Um, you know, we're, we're led to believe that many of these things are not operating yet, but who knows? Uh, again, we don't have the context of this presentation either. But interestingly enough, on the right side here, uh, we can see Ripple's X Rapid, uh, which obviously now is old. We know that's on-demand liquidity. Um, and IBM's Worldwire, and we know IBM's tie-in with Stellar. But this is implying, it's implying that uh, XRP and something like Stellar could be possibly being already used. Uh, and then we have right down here, this is Finality. Finality is a ut uh, utility settlement coin. Uh, crypto and CBDC. So very interesting to see where this goes. And EY, Ernst & Young, if you are not aware, Ernst & Young is the blockchain integrator for NASHA. NASHA is the steward of the ACH, the entire ACH network in the United States. The ACH network is a national automated clearinghouse for electronic funds transfers financial transactions for consumers, businesses, federal, state, and local government levels. Uh, ACH processes large volumes of credit and debit transactions and batches, trillions of dollars on a yearly basis. So interesting to see that in their presentation, it said today's payment flows. And I don't know, that's just very interesting to see that they're phrasing it that way. And we can see Wrath of Kahneman's initial tweet today as well. Uh, this is from October 7th. And he's just reiterating that we do not have the context, like, right now but it's implying this, that it's already happening but who knows again i mean we're i think we're in the dark with some of this stuff here but my opinion is it's probably uh we don't understand the context as to the presentation but i could be completely wrong uh but awesome fine dude and um all the credit go for that fine completely goes to him so all right finality right here we can just see that it's part of this util uh, utility settlement coin project we saw that in that slide as well now, interesting that we can see here that they had decided to delay this finality. And Corey Johnson, ex-Ripple employee, uh, banks can't make these changes to themselves by themselves because finality is, is essentially it's a banking initiative for this walled garden stablecoin, right? Uh, they need a third party to help. And then he does hashtag XRP there. So I just wanted to provide that for context and scope because... It's always interesting to go back to some of these older things and, you know, understand how they may or may not be tying into newer announcements. Uh, all right. So now if you go to the, the tweet there that says finality is delayed, though, the New York Times deleted it. So um, and then we've got I am Legion here. He is a monster on Twitter uh, regarding research. Just talking about speculation here. Finality utility coin gets delayed due to regulation. Corey Johnson comments the delay. Banks need third party help. I think we all do know that banks definitely need third party help. Banks inherently are dinosaurs that cannot update by themselves, right? Why do you think that email on the internet has been around for years now and banks still can't seamlessly transmit money and settle money across borders instantaneously? They just are not good at updating their systems. So, all right, now I want to move into this because I've got, again, please, if, if you're watching this, I recommend that you, that you at least stay like 90% of this video because I've got a ton of information in this one. Um, this came out today. This is Target 2. Target 2 experiences total system failure. SEPA payments delayed. A complete failure of all payment transactions within the Target 2 system was experienced for several hours on Friday with backup systems and contingency models also initially unable to function. Now, this is very much has to deal with the Euro system, the European Central Bank, et cetera, et cetera. And 
we'll see where this goes here because Target 2, <clears throat> if you're not aware, is the Trans-European Automated Real-Time Growth Settlement Express Transfer System. It is the real-time growth settlement system for the entire Eurozone and is available to non-Eurozone countries. It was developed by and is owned by the Euro system. So imagine, um, imagine the amount of volume and flows that run through uh, Target 2. Now, Deutsche Bank had put out a uh, description here in July of 2018 saying that there is a three-pronged approach bringing market infrastructure up to, up to speed. And this deals with ISO 20022, which is essentially the updated messaging uh, across the board, the messaging um, and uh, the messaging system that's going to be utilized from all of these institutions. We know SWIFT delayed ISO 20022 migration, but this is talking about the Euro system. So this deals with target two, a three-pronged approach, migrating to ISO 20022. And this talks about a big bang approach, which is scheduled for 2021 next year. And I have not seen a delay for the Euro system uh, and this quote unquote big bang approach in 2021. Interestingly enough, many of us may know that uh, the blockchain uh, in the payments company Ripple uh, was the first distributed ledger uh, company to be tied directly in and a, a mem become a member of ISO 20022, shaping the future of cross border payments. I think Marcus Treacher uh, touches base on here saying that Ripple has always been ISO 20022 compliant. Uh, they've been aligned with the standards from the start. Now, now Ripple is a part of the ISO 20022 Registration Management Group, Standards Body, and the first member focused on distributed ledger technology. This membership enables us to meet the needs of our 300 customers by helping def the, define the future direction of cross-border payment standards to evolve the ISO 20022 standard. All right, moving on. I want to touch base on the IMF. This was a blog that came out, I think, probably on Friday or Saturday. I, don't, I haven't seen it presented yet, but... I just thought the picture was very humorous to me. Uh, emerging and frontier markets, policy tools in times of financial stress. And it looks like they're just opening up the floodgates with unlimited printing of fiat, which, uh, as we all know, essentially does not solve anything. anything. Uh, maybe in the short term, it props everything up. But uh, we, I think most of us know where this all goes, and it does not end well continuing to do this. All right. I wanted to get into this though. This is Cinecron acquires City Hub Digital. Now, City Hub is a or Cinecron is a leading digital transformation consulting firm. Uh, they they acquired City Hub Digital, a London and New York based technology consulting firm for the financial services industry. Uh, you can look a little bit into City Hub Digital if you want to, but I haven't seen the name Cinecron in quite a while. Uh, they are very much so tied in with blockchain, um, but more interestingly, even. Uh, they're tied in with Murex as well, and we'll go over that in a second here. But Cinecron, very much so, I looks like they use XRP. Um, let me see right here. Ripple. I'm not going to find it now. Yeah, it's right on their main website here, but, you know, the Cinecron Blockchain Accelerator for Global Payments. Um, technologies like Ripple can add tremendous value in the global sphere by bringing... Uh, bringing multi-day settlement cycles down to real time. And I think they do talk about the token in here at some point. Hang on one second. Cinecron's implementation takes advantage of the Ripple's network ability, the Ripple network's ability to set up trusted relationships. It's market makers that provide optimal foreign exchange rates and the network's secure di distributed ledger and cryptocurrency. Together, these elements enable fast, secure, and low-cost transfers between international currencies and provide reduced costs and fees. Uh, FX rates for conversion between Ripple's, country, uh, Ripple's currency and origin and target country currencies are guaranteed to be amongst the best. Fast resettlement, I mean, you get the picture, right? So Cinecron, very much so tied in with Ripple. I they have a Ripple wallet, I believe, uh, if I read through that correctly earlier today. Um, they acquired City Hub Digital. But even more interesting, World Bank, this was back in June of 2019, picked Murex for Treasury. And if you go down here in Cinecron's um, partnership relationships, they have um, Murex has Cinecron listed, uh, listed as a systems integrator. And we can also see very much so here that. Oh, I got, oh yeah, the. the uh, <laughs> I always love the LinkedIn ones. Um, so this is Niraj Marf Marfat. I'm going to butcher these names. 
Um, director channel sales at Ripple, January 2018 to present, and was previously head of alliances at Murex. We know Murex, obviously World Bank now. Frank Martin, project manager at Ripple, August 2018 to present. Uh, just left Murex, nine years and two months, September 2015 to July 2018. So, and... On right on Cinecron's website here as well, technology practice overview. This is an essential, essentially, this is an overview of all of their corresponding relationships um, with these banking institutions, these technology providers. We can see here for blockchain, they're tied in with Ripple. We can see they're tied in with Finastra here. We can see they're tied in with uh, Murex as well. So interesting, it's the first time I've seen Cinecron pop up in a while. Uh, and obviously we know how big the World Bank is and yeah, you can, I don't know, connect the dots as much as you want to. Again, those LinkedIn profiles, I'm not sitting here saying, oh, it's all planned out with uh, Murex and Ripple and these LinkedIn employees, you know, um, employee backgrounds and their work history is directly tied in. I'm just presenting this information to you. I found it a while back and uh, Cinecron came up again today, so I thought it was worthwhile presenting. All right, NetSense technology updates uh, on rollout plans for its cryptocurrency Visa card. Now we do know that NetSense is tied in with XRP. What's interesting to me as well is that they're partnered up with this I2C as well. I2C is going to be the back end provider now, what they've announced today, that links directly into the Visa network. And if you're wondering when the launch date is, supposedly November 15th for its virtual card product. However, if the deadline slips, there is an internally imposed Visa blackout period preventing the issuance of cards during the holidays so that the next launch will be uh, January 15th, 2021. At that time, NetSense said it will be positioned to issue both virtual and physical Visa cards that essentially are very much so tied in with crypto. Uh, interestingly enough here, we saw RippleNet partner uh, WireX partners with I2C to introduce multi-currency travel card. Hmm, interesting. I2C we just saw uh, is the backend provider of this, uh, the NetSense tie-in with Visa. So I'm um, interested to see where that goes. Okay, moving along a little bit. Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is moving towards open banking regulation. Now we know, you can look up this today, this was announced uh, today, they issued an advance notice of proposed rulemaking that seeks comments and information to assist the Bureau in implementing Section 1033 of the Dodd-Frank Act. This is right here, 12 CFR Chapter X, Consumer Access to Financial Records. Uh, I believe this, I think this just came out today. What's interesting though is that the Co Consumer Financial Protection Bureau very much so tied in and mentioned directly XRP as well. Remittance transfers under the Electronic Fund Transfer Act. And we can see right here, of the continued growth, monitoring the continued growth and expanding partnerships of virtual currency companies such as Ripple, which offer both a payments messaging platform to support cross-border money transfers as well as a proprietary virtual currency XRP. XRP is not um, a proprietary currency, uh, which can be used to affect settlement of those transfers. All right, we can see right here, this is a central bank of Kenya entered into discussions with other global central banks on the possibilities of entering into the digital currency space. Not huge news here, not huge information. We all know what's coming with all of these central banks. They're all going to have digital currencies, and I expect it to happen sooner rather than later. Also, we saw today Ripple partner TerraPay, and I couldn't find if TerraPay was ever actually announced, or maybe they're one of those undisclosed, quote unquote, assumed partnerships. Um, but they just received a FinTrack Canada. Uh, MSB license. And this is very much so tying in with uh, hopefully cryptocurrency because Canada apparently allows the legal use of crypto. Um, the AMB crypto, and then again, again, this is a crypto website. So take this news with a grain of salt. Uh, AMB crypto stating basically an important move for TerraPay as it now can potentially use XRP to facilitate cross border, should be settlements, not payments. Okay. World Economic Forum, the Future of Jobs Report 2020. And this came out at the very end of last week, but this is interesting. You can go on right, the world, uh, right on the World Economic Forum's website here. It does talk very much so about distributed ledger technology and blockchain. Technology is likely to be adopted by 2025 by share of companies surveyed. Blockchain, uh, distributed ledger technology, 11%. Uh, but you go down a little bit further. Uh, technology adoption, share of companies surveyed. This is in the UAE. It's, they're going over country profiles here. 53% in the UAE, 
71% in Brazil. Um, Canada's got 72%. China has 69%. So, I mean, just interesting to see and take kind of a, a step back and see the forest uh, for the trees here, or, or the forest instead of the trees, obviously, by zooming in with all this stuff. And you take a step back and you see where all these countries actually are at as far as adoption is concerned, or at least what these surveyed companies are uh, letting um, out of the bag here. Now, again, Accenture, we see them all the time. Accenture is obviously a Ripple partner. SAP is obviously a Ripple partner. Uh, Accenture, together with SAP, takes bold steps to move clients further into the cloud with open industry solutions. Uh, and we know that this is all going directly towards the cloud here. Um, this is pattern one banking innovation with SAP and Ripple. We can see, obviously, Ripple and SAP are partners here. But this is a MT103 connectivity right directly into Ripple's gateway. Ripple Connect, uh, Amazon Web Services, and tied into the Ripple network. So this is SAP's cloud platform, right? Cloud platform directly tying into all this as well. Uh, MT103, if you were not aware, is the legacy uh, messaging format of Swift. Um, so that's just interesting to me. Uh, and then again, today I saw Accenture and MIT teamed up to help organizations seize opportunity uh, from industry and technological convergence. MIT is obviously part of the University Blockchain Research Initiative through Ripple. Uh, Accenture is obviously a Ripple partner as well. This came out today. This is B20 Summit Day 1. Uh, so this is obviously part of the... the these G20 initiatives as well. Uh, multiple high-level hitters in this. Uh, Kristalina uh, Georgieva uh, of the IMF. We've got uh, Republic of Indonesia, World Trade Organization. Um, we've got Kenya represented here and U.S. Financial Times. So they talk about the resetting Bretton Woods in this, but there was nothing that overly stuck out about digitization besides the, the obvious resetting Bretton Woods. Um, she added... Uh, Kristalina added rhetoric in um, and then just basically talked about, you know, 1944, the war that was going on, the IMF and the World Bank. Uh, so <laughs> I guess there is something there, but it was three hours and 44 minutes long. I'm not going to sit here and bore you with that. Uh, B20 Summit Day 1, you can check it out right on YouTube and take a watch if, or take a look if you want to. So I found this interesting. This is a little bit of a um, little bit of uh, news around the crypto sphere, I guess, just to end this out. Uh, Ethereum powering twice as many transactions as Bitcoin approaching $1 trillion settled in 2020. Uh, I, I do believe that Ethereum is going to be, uh, continue to be successful. I've just seen too many documents with Ethereum tied in. Um, and, you know, it's interesting to see what's actually going on as far as settlements are concerned, transaction wise in this space. Uh, I think Ethereum is a monster, um, not financial advice. I just hope that at some point they can, um, Go to Ethereum 2.0 and, and deliver on, <clears throat> you know, revamping their system a little bit to make it more utility friendly. So, but they're tied into this system very much so at this point, in my opinion. Uh, I did see another article probably about a month ago about Hashgraph um, processing more transactions in its first year than Ethereum, uh, very by a large by a large um, amount. So, uh, I, I pay attention to Hashgraph as well. Uh, Siemens is launching a blockchain electricity trading platform in Germany. We all know how big Siemens is, so pay attention to that. And Toyota's tech arm to begin company-wide digital currency pilot. Uh, this is through Decurrent, I believe. Um, this is Japanese, I believe, here. Uh, but you can translate it. And this is a real release here, so you know we all know that uh, Toyota is a little bit of a larger company as well so they're tying themselves very much into blockchain at this point so i hope you guys like this video today um i appreciate all the support and if you see any scam ads on this video again don't participate in that if there's news tomorrow i will definitely present it and i hope you guys have a great morning afternoon or evening whenever you happen to watch this all right later